Yeah. Analytics off the chain, all the channels not the same. Jake and Kyle, you know the name. Headline the nation, we running the game. What is going on, Headliner Nation? Jake, Fantasy Headliners. Hopefully everybody's doing well out there today. We're talking about running backs. We're going to start and sit here to kick off the fantasy playoffs in week 15. Looking forward to it because you know what today is going to be? Say it louder for the people in the back. That's right. It's going to be a banger today, figuratively and literally. If you hear a lot of banging going on in the background, no, I'm not under attack. We're uh, having some solar panels installed because, you know, tax credits and such. But hey, anyway, if you hear any loud noises in the background, just ignore them. I know they're there. I can hear them too, but we're not going to waste a whole lot of time. We're going to get into all the matchups in week 15. But before we do, how'd we do in week 14 here just last week? Well, we did pretty dang good. Out of the 51 running backs that we gave a start or sit designation to that completed their games here this past week, 39 of them are correct for an accuracy percentage of 76%. Some of the bigger misses were Shad Penny, Damn it, Devin Singletary out there having a decent game. James Robinson totally disappearing. Hate that we were wrong on him. Some of the bigger hits, CEH, Donta Foreman finally nailed the backfield of Tennessee. And then Zeke Elliott had him as a hit here this week because we had him as a sit last week and he failed to reach the 10 fantasy points needed. It's just one of those difficult situations in the Dallas backfield. And I have a feeling we're probably going to be dealing with it for a few more weeks. But before we get into that matchup, let's kick it off here Thursday night football. Kansas City Chiefs and Los Angeles Chargers. And let's just start this one off with an attaboy Clyde, right? Because, I mean, has anybody ever really said attaboy Clyde? Not a typical saying here uh, by any means, but the dude was RB10 overall just last week and only had 13 touches in that game. Now, some people, they're disappointed with, you know, Daryl Williams getting some of that work. But when you actually take a look a little bit deeper, Kai only had five touches on the day. Just so happens that one of them was a 23-yard receiving touchdown. They both only played 23 offensive snaps there for the Kansas City Chiefs just last week. The game kind of got out of hand against Las Vegas, and really, they were rested down the stretch for Derek Gore, who went out and did his own thing this past week. Kansas City had three running backs finish inside the top 17 overall running backs this past week. CEH, however, still led this backfield in touches, but now they get a matchup going up against the Los Angeles Chargers, who allowed right around 20. 24 fantasy points per game to opposing running backs. That's second most in the NFL. CEH, still the lead guy in this backfield. Had that game been a little bit closer this past week, we would have seen more Clyde edwards alaire and he is still the safest start here this week for the Chargers. I need someone to do me a favor. Someone out there should be willing to sacrifice their ankle to give it to Austin Eckler. I mean, can we get the, the doctor that treated Dalvin Cook in his shoulder, that miraculous recovery? Can we ship him down to L.A.? I'll buy the plane ticket because we need ourselves some Austin Eckler here this week. But having this be a short week for the Chargers, not ideal. Now, obviously, if Austin Eckler is active, he's in your starting lineup. If he doesn't, we got ourselves a full-blown committee here with the Los Angeles Chargers, and it's really not that sexy. You got Justin Jackson, Joshua Kelly, going to be, like I said, close to a 50-50 split. Now, Kansas City, they allow right around 17 fantasy points per game. Honestly, fingers crossed, we're hoping for Austin Eckler, and we're looking for more news here as the week progresses. If we do not have Austin Eckler, and we need to take a stab on someone it's Justin Jackson, but I don't have that warm fuzzy here on the inside. We're keeping our fingers crossed. We get good news from Austin Eckler. But now for the first time in the 2021 NFL season, we got some Saturday football. So make sure your lineups are set here early as we have the Las Vegas Raiders and Cleveland Browns. Now, if you recall, when we were just talking about the Kansas City Chiefs, we mentioned that they had three running backs just last week that finished inside the top 17 against the Las Vegas Raiders. And now the Cleveland Browns get to go against that same defense and the Las Vegas Raiders. Now, Cleveland, they're in some trouble, right? They are in some COVID trouble. Kareem Hunt is hurt, likely without Kareem Hunt waiting for official word on that. But they could also potentially be without Jarvis Landry, Austin Hooper, and a slew of other players on this roster that may not be able to play if they're on the COVID IR this week. That's definitely something we're paying close attention to because as of right now, the Raiders, they allow right around 22 fantasy points per game to opposing running backs, and there could be Chubb everywhere. This could be the most inappropriate 
appropriate NFL game you watch all year. Because no matter when you look up at the screen, it's just going to be chub. Chub, chub, chub in your face everywhere. And that's okay because this could be some perfect timing for Nick Chubb to get back on track, who's not having a bad year. This guy still has over a thousand total yards and seven touchdowns on the season. He's doing just fine. He's on pace for another solid year with double digit touchdowns and 1,200 to 1,400 total yards. Another super solid year for Nick Chubb. This is definitely a must start situation for him, but we're paying close attention to see who all they're without this weekend because this could be an opportunity for Dearness Johnson as well. If all these options are missing, I'll probably move Dearness Johnson to a low end start, a flex play here this week. For those of you who are dealing with injuries or just have no other better options, if they're missing everybody else, Dearness Johnson, Sir Nicholas Chubb, going to get a lot of work. Now for Las Vegas, it's really just going to be Josh Jacobs from here on out as long as he stays healthy. Peyton Barber only had three touches this past week, and Josh Jacobs commanded 75% of the offensive snaps. Now, this game was out of hand, right? Kansas City got out to a big lead last week. They didn't really have to rely on the running game very much because they had nothing to really play for at that point. Going up against the Browns, not the easiest task. So they allow around 17 fantasy points per game, but I do expect this game to be closer, and that's only going to mean that we get to see Josh Jacobs more often throughout this entire game. Now, this Cleveland offense being depleted the way it's going to be only bodes well for this game and potentially more Josh Jacobs. So once again, he's going to remain a start. But because one game just isn't enough on Saturday, we're going to have two games. That's right, doubleheader, second game, New England Patriots, Indianapolis Colts. And one of the most important things in this world that we live in is the return of Jonathan Taylor coming off of his bye week. Now, in case you've forgotten, he is the overall running back one in fantasy football with almost 1,700 total yards and 18 mother in touchdowns here for Jonathan Taylor. Do I really need to tell you how good this guy is? If I do, there's no way that you're really competing for anything here this week in fantasy football because you've literally lived under a rock if I need to sell you on Jonathan Taylor. Now, this is not the easiest matchup for him. New England allows right around 16 fantasy points per game, sixth fewest in the NFL. New England has only allowed 100 yards rushing to an opponent once over the last five weeks, but I don't care who Jonathan Taylor plays. You never sit this guy. As for Naheem Hines, he's had less than 20 offensive snaps in three out of the last four weeks. Now, as much as I like the explosiveness and how they like to use him from time to time, the usage just isn't there consistently for him to be anywhere near being a safe start at this point of the season. So he's going to be a sit for New England. All eyes are are on Damian Harris and his hamstring. Now, that's figuratively, not literally. That would just be weird if everybody was literally watching his hamstring. But remember, just before their bye week, he left with a hamstring injury against the Buffalo Bills. But at that point, he'd had 10 rush attempts for 111 yards and a touchdown. He was doing just fine. But the bye came at the perfect time in order for him to get a little bit of rest. So, what does that week off do for him? Is he ready to go here this week? We're really looking for those full practice participations here by the end of the week. But honestly, this backfield, pretty plug and play, right? If Damian Harris is active for the New England Patriots, he's in your starting lineup. If he is not active, then Ramondre Stevenson becomes that guy who's very capable of going out there and shouldering the full workload. Damian Harris, option one, Stevenson, option two. Now going up against the Indianapolis Colts, they allow right around 16 fantasy points per game themselves. Fifth fewest in the NFL. Definitely watching Damian Harris close this week. Do I want to start both these guys? No, not in a matchup. Going up against Indianapolis, who's pretty solid against the run, right? We're looking for just one guy in this backfield, either Damian Harris or Ramondre Stevenson, if Harris is limited or out. Really paying close attention, though. Going to have to ask the doc on this one here Friday, so make sure you check out that episode here. But as of right now, at the time of this recording, we're firing up Damian Harris. But now you may be sitting there asking yourself, Jake, why didn't we hit thrust into the Saturday football games? That's because over here, we keep it classy. And we only hit thrust into Sunday football games. Plus, I'm too old to hit thrust for two straight days. Things would start hurting, and I ain't got time to be sore. So let's kick it off here Sunday football with the Carolina Panthers and Buffalo Bills. Now, Buffalo... They've been struggling against the run here as of late, allowing over 135 rushing yards to three out of the last four of their opponents. Now, two of those games, they actually allowed over 220 yards to their opponents. So yeah, yeah, that is no bueno whatsoever. And on the surface, sounds like it could be a good thing for Chuba Hubbard, right? But the Carolina offense is what I would like to call stupid. It's it, it just it's, they're trying to be too cute. Matt Rule 
He's not it, y'all. I mean, he's he's literally Chip Kelly 2.0. We know Cam Newton can consistently go deep down the field, yet he continually has receivers running deep down the field. This isn't the same Cam Newton from like five, six years ago, right? That's not what we're seeing on the field. Utilize the skill set that he currently has and mold your offense around it. You paid this dude a lot of money to come in here midseason and try to salvage your season. I don't care if he has Christian McCaffrey or not. He still has plenty of weapons at his disposal, and now all of a sudden you want to do this QB, you know, rotating door. Come on, don't be stupid. Utilize the talent that you have and make it fit to your offense. And Matt Rule struggling to do that. Now, Chuba still going to go out there and get double digit touches. And for a lot of you out there, you need that, right? You don't have the depth or the options that can go out there and get the touches. You can't score fantasy points if you're not touching the football. He's going to be a start for me here this week, but he's not going to be super high ranked, even though the matchup on paper looks pretty good. It's the overall offense that worries me, and that's why I'm dropping him down here a few spots. For Buffalo, I guess Devin Singletary is like the flavor of the month at this point because the Carolina defense has basically fallen off here second half of the year. They've allowed over 110 rushing yards to their opponents in four out of their last five games, and we know the running back one on the Buffalo Bills is Josh Allen. How healthy is he? We saw him in a walking boot to end that game here this past week. Is he limited at all? Is he good to go? Some people out there saying he went and saw Hamilton and he was walking without a limp and didn't have a boot on. I can't confirm that, but it's just rumors that are out there that you see. Now, there is nothing safe about the Buffalo backfield. There is no running back for the Buffalo Bills that have had 100 total yards in a game this season. Is that correct? I That can't be. I got to... I got to check that out. That is crazy if that is an actual stat. Nobody, like nobody, you got Matt Breida, you got Devin Singletary, you got Zach Moss, who we know is not that good, but nobody's had 100 total yards in a game in that backfield all year long. You just can't trust it at this point in the fantasy season. They're all going to be sits for safety here this week. But now we head to a matchup of my Arizona Cardinals against Kyle's Detroit Lions and If Monday's choke job for the Cardinals wasn't enough for me to have to deal with, now we're looking at a James Conner injury that happened late. Last play of the game, basically, there for the Arizona Cardinals. He had an MRI on his ankle, but at the time of this recording, we have yet to find out the results. But we cannot, cannot, cannot lose James Conner at this point, especially when he's going against the Detroit Lions. I mean, that's enough to give me some... You know what I'm talking about, but he's had at least 99 total yards in three straight games. He's had touchdowns in 10 out of his last 11 games played, and in five games this season, he's scored multiple touchdowns. That is absolutely crazy, but another thing we have to look at here is the potential return of Chase Edmonds. A lot thought it would happen last week. It did not. Do we see him here this week with the injury to James Conner? I would almost guarantee that Chase Edmonds is going to be activated and going to be active during the this weekend's game. So what does that mean for James Conner? Well, honestly, it's all going to come down to how healthy is that ankle and how limited is he going to be? If he's 100% heading into the weekend, you still start James Conner regardless of what happens with Chase Edmonds. If James Conner were to sit or be heavily limited all week long and Chase Edmonds is 100% healthy and activated, Chase Edmonds becomes the guy that's a must start here in this backfield. If both of these guys are full goes, they're fully healthy, no limitations by the weekend, they're both going to be starts. So until I hear more information, I'm moving forward with with what we know. And as of right this second, James Conner is active and Chase Edmonds is expected to be active. So both of them are going to be in the start column, but another backfield we're paying close attention to here this week. Just love the matchup going up against Detroit. They allow over 23 fantasy points per game to opposing teams. And like I said, both of these guys could be worth a start, especially with DeAndre Hopkins banged up as well. So definitely something to pay close attention to if you're a James Conner or Chase Edmonds owner for Detroit. This one is super simple. It's short. It's sweet. It's DeAndre Swift or nada in this backfield because I'm just not interested otherwise. Do you really want to go out there and start Craig Reynolds in your fantasy playoffs? Probably not. Do you want to bank on Jamal Williams, who hasn't scored 10-plus fantasy points in a game since week one? No, probably not. Do you want to do it against an Arizona defense that allows only 15.5 fantasy points per game to opposing running backs, third fewest in the NFL? No, probably not. Now, Dan Campbell has come out and said that he is quote-unquote hopeful that we'll see DeAndre Swift here soon. I'm sure they're hopeful for a lot of things 
in Detroit. But until I get the word that DeAndre Swift is active and healthy, all the guys in this backfield are sits. Now we head down to Miami, though, for the Dolphins and Jets and talk about an absolute damn mess. On one side, you have Michael Carter potentially returning to the Jets, and he's really the only running back worth a crap in this backfield. We've kind of seen that over the past few weeks, right? Especially with no Elijah Moore, Corey Davis is injured. Michael Carter could see some decent volume out of the backfield going up against Miami, who loves right on 17 fantasy points per game. Michael Carter is my only option in this backfield. If he's not active, 100% full go, I'm not touching anybody else. For Miami, I, I think we should probably auction off to a season ticket owner for the Miami Dolphins. They should have an opportunity to start at running back here this week. So I'm going to pick, uh, let's see here, section 103, row 4, seat 2. Congratulations. You're on the depth chart now playing running back for the Miami Dolphins because everybody else may be out. Miles Gaskin, Salvin Ahmed, Philip Lindsay, as of right now, all on the COVID IR. Now, all of them are vaccinated, so all they need are two negative tests within 24 hours in order to play this weekend. As of the time this recording has not happened, so that's definitely something to pay close attention to because we may not have any other options, which sucks because they're going against the Jets, and the Jets allow over 27 fantasy points per game, the most in the NFL. This is kind of going to be one of those wait and see who is active here. Now, obviously, Miles Gaskin is still the number one option Option in this backfield if he is good to go. Be sure to watch the rankings video here a little bit later in the week, plus the injury video on Friday, and hopefully we have some updates by then, because until we do, we have no idea who to start. We may even see Malcolm Brown come back this week, so that's just something else to pay attention to. They're going to need help in this backfield because they could be severely shorthanded. On the other New York team now, though, we got the Giants and the Cowboys, and here we have the Dallas backfield that's basically held together at this point with some old paper clips, some half-broken toothpicks, and some dry mud, right? Well, I'm not talking about that good red Carolina clay mud that's like super glue. No, I'm talking about mud that just doesn't have enough water in it. The ground was already dry, and it's basically just falling apart. That's what this backfield is as of right now, and to make it all worse... It's basically being powered by a fuse from a Christmas light string. And you know how you know how those go here this time of year. It's not good, right? We have Tony Pollard. Does he return from a torn planter fascia? I I don't think so. And even if he does, how limited is he going to be? That is not ideal. You have Zeke out there running like Dr. Ethan Turner when he hears the word free. That's not ideal either. It just doesn't look fluid, right? He doesn't look quick. He looks like he's running in pain. He hasn't rushed for four yards per carry in a game since week nine. Now they get a matchup going up against the New York Giants who allow over 20 fantasy points per game. The matchup is good though, right? We know Tony Pollard probably not going to be 100% for sure. Zeke is still going to get right around 15 touches. And the last matchup against the Giants, Zeke went out and had 21 carries for 110 yards in the touchdown, added in two catches for three yards, and then another touchdown. He really performed well against this defense. Now, last week, I had Ezekiel Elliott as a sit. I got to move him back to a start this week. The matchup is good. He's still getting the volume. It's not exactly the volume that we want, but they've already come out and said, hey, listen, he's just going to continue to play through this knee injury that he's dealing with. And if he can find the end zone, he's going to be worth a start here this week. And that's why I'm leaving him in that column, especially with the uh, the availability of Tony Pollard kind of being unavailable here as of right now. For the Giants, it was nice to see Saquon Barkley have a day last week, right? 95 yards and a touchdown. Best game he's had since week four of this season. Now, week five against Dallas, that's the game in which he got hurt and only played in six snaps. So not a whole lot to really go off of of that matchup. But at this point, he's healthy. He's getting touches. Everybody else in that offense is hurt. So obviously, you got to start Saquon Barkley here this week. Over to Philadelphia now, though, for the Eagles and the Washington football team. And I'm just going to come out and say it. I'm going to be pretty blunt here. I'm going to rip it off like a Band-Aid because we're all thinking it, right? We're all looking at this Washington logo saying, Gibby. Hold on to the damn ball, Gibby. High and tight. High and tight. Hold on to that thing. Tote that rock everywhere you go, Gibby, because we're sick of the fumbles because you get benched for him. He's coming off his worst game in a month. Now we're one week closer to J.D. McKissick returning from injury and taking some of your touches. And with Terry McLaurin banged up, they need you, Gibby. They need you to hold on to the football and make some plays. Going up against the Philadelphia Eagles, they allow right around 17 fantasy points per game. You got to roll him out. There's no way you can afford to sit this guy in the playoffs, but come on, Gibby, hold on to that rock because we need right around 20 to 25 touches, and we need you to find the end zone here this week for Philadelphia. 
I guess we go back to scratching our head. I can't scratch the front, though, because I, I don't have a whole lot left uh, before it's completely gone. I mean, Nick Sirianni is partially responsible for what's going on up here. But how limited is Miles Sanders now coming off the bye week, had an ankle injury prior to it, yet to really hear some news on that. Jordan Howard, he could be returning here this week from a knee injury. The Washington defense has actually been pretty decent. They've allowed only over 100 yards rushing two times since the middle of October. There's just so many options in this backfield. It's a below average matchup. It's just not ideal. You got Miles Sanders, Jordan Howard, Boston Scott, Kenneth Gainwell, I mean, who do you go with in a difficult situation, knowing that some of these guys are going to be limited? Now, if we head into the weekend and Miles Sanders is a full go, he is the guy that I gamble on. But until we get that word, we're kind of in wait and see mode here. Once again, I'm going to list Miles Sanders as a start, but that's fully dependent if he's 100 percent healthy here heading into the weekend. Out to Pittsburgh now, though, for the Steelers and Titans. And finally, Finally nailed the backfield of the Tennessee Titans last week when I had Dante Foreman as a start and the others as a sit. It's a pretty even split, though, with all of these guys. And there's going to be limited touchdown opportunities in this offense. But Foreman now has back-to-back games with at least 10 fantasy points, but now gets a matchup going up against the Pittsburgh Steelers, which is difficult, right? Uh-uh. They've allowed over 135 rushing yards to their opponents in five out of the last six games played and allowing almost 21 fantasy points per game to opposing running backs. Now, in this backfield, with those limited scoring opportunities, I got to go with the guy who's going to get the, the bulk of the touches and the goal line carries. So once again, Donta Foreman going to be the guy that I start here in this backfield for Pittsburgh. There's really no question on whether we should start Najee, right? Like you're not debating, do I start Najee? Do I not start? Do I? St-? Yes, you always start him. And now he's going up against the Tennessee Titans, who are number two in the NFL against opposing running backs, allowing only 15 fantasy points per game. But you're like, Jake, that's a difficult matchup. I don't care how difficult this matchup is. We're starting Najee Harris due to his volume. There's no way you can sit a guy that's going to go out and get you 20 plus touches in a week and have touchdown upside and have some pass catching upside. We're off. Obviously, once again, starting ourselves some Najee Harris here this week. Down to Jacksonville now, though, for the Jags and the Texans. And once again, I'm just going to be frank with y'all. you, Urban Meyer. I mean, this guy is an absolute, this entire team at this point is an absolute joke. This has to be the worst situation that I can think of of any team here in recent memory. You've had injured studs. You've had injured rookies. You've had coaching situations on and off the field that are distractions to the team. You've had locker room banter between players that are not ideal. There is literally almost nothing going right for the Jacksonville Jaguars. And the fact that James Robinson has 15 total touches combined over the last two games played is absolutely nuts. And then you get Urban Meyer going out there and saying, oh, we need to really make sure we get James Robinson the football. No joke. You say that, but you're not doing it. How difficult is it to get the ball in the hands of arguably your best offensive player this season? Now they get a matchup against the Houston Texans. Time to redeem yourself here a little bit, Urban. They allow over 23 fantasy points per game. Fifth most in the NFL to opposing running backs, Urban. Maybe you should get James Robinson the ball. Just a little bit. Quit pissing away the talent that you have. There's not a whole lot on your roster to begin with, Urban. Utilize those who actually have it. You got a couple guys with some talent. Let's absolutely utilize that. Now, I love James Robinson. I love the talent of James Robinson. I love this matchup for James Robinson. This should be a big game. This should be a smash start for James Robinson here this week. But Urban just screws up my my safety right now. He makes it a little bit more of a gamble. I'm going to list him as a start, but due to urban being an idiot, I got to drop him further down the rankings because it's just not as safe as I would like it to be for Houston. You know, that saying that I wouldn't touch her with your, well, that kind of applies to this backfield here in Houston. It's gross. It's not appealing. It's nothing that I'm interested in. I'm just, you know what, I'm not going to waste your time. They're all sits here, and they're probably going to remain that way remainder of the season. Now we head back out west for the Denver Broncos, Cincinnati Bengals, and 
Joe Mixon's healthy. Right? He's healthy enough to go out there and get 20 touches, which is great to see. Wasn't really expecting that with as limited as he was all week long. Kind of a down game for him, though, right? But it was a great sign that he was out there on the field and getting the volume. Now a matchup going up against the Denver Broncos, who allowed right around 17 fantasy points per game. And overall, this defense playing pretty good. But there's no way you can afford to sit a guy who has 1,200 total yards, 14 touchdowns, and is getting close to 20 touches a week. He's obviously a start for Denver. In my opinion, this may be one of the best overall backfields in all of the NFL. Sitting here right now without doing any literal research, I can't think of one backfield that I like more overall than the Denver Broncos right now. You got Melvin Gordon playing great. You got Javante Williams absolutely just going out there and just annihilating people. Both of them finished inside the top 10 in week 14. Javante Williams right now has more forced missed tackles than Jonathan Taylor on the season. Melvin Gordon has been reliable when he's out there on the field and producing. Cincinnati allows right around 17 fantasy points per game, but Denver hasn't rushed for less than 147 yards in a game over their last three weeks played. Both of these guys, weekly starts, weekly flex plays. I'm locking them in in every league that I have. They're just safe and consistent, and that's that's definitely what we're looking for at this time of year in the fantasy playoffs, especially in our flex spot. Now we head out to San Francisco for the 49ers and Atlanta Falcons, and for the love of all things holy, can we please have Elijah Mitchell back in the backfield for the San Francisco 49ers? Definitely watching his status closely here throughout the week because he is the clear number one option for this team in their backfield. This backfield cannot do anything without him. Look at what Jeff Wilson has done here as of late. A whole lot of nothing. Looks pretty slow out there on the field. Jermichael Hasty. They don't, they're not committed to him. They're not giving him touches weekly. It's just absolutely gross here in this backfield. And now a matchup against the Falcons who allow over 18 fantasy points per game. The only guy I'm going with in this backfield is going to be Elijah Mitchell. Hopefully we have him back here this week. Like I said, make sure we're paying close attention to his practice reports here as the week progresses for Atlanta. Mike Davis out there looking like that kid in an elementary playground going, oh, pick me. Pick me. Pick me. No, nobody wants to pick you still, Mike, even though you've had back-to-back weeks of at least 10 fantasy points scored. He's just one of those guys that he's burned too many people all year long, right? He's been selected. He's been picked for your team too many times and gone out there and absolutely sucked it up. So you're like, nah, dog, I'm going to pass on this one. I'm going to go with uh, Cordero. Instead, because you better believe we're we're going to fire up Cordero Patterson here once again. He's tied his season high in carries just last week with 16. Love to see that because he's still going to be active in the passing game as well because he's had five targets now in back-to-back weeks. That's the guy in this offense. That guy is this offense here going forward, and it's not going to change in a fairly difficult matchup here this week going up against San Francisco. So in my opinion, Cordero is still the guy we're starting here in Atlanta. Down to L.A. for the Rams and the Seahawks, and Rashad Penny is alive. He's healthy for now, but he's looking he's looking great, right? He looked great last week. 16 carries for 137 yards and two touchdowns. Don't don't blow it out of proportion. It was against the Houston Texans, but we did see James Conner do pretty good against these Los Angeles Rams just last week in the passing game. Right. I mean, James Conner couldn't get a whole lot going on the ground, only had 13 carries for 31 yards on the ground. However, he did have two rushing touchdowns. Now, Seattle. They just don't really use their backs in the pass catching game, right? They barely even use DK Metcalf at this point. Now, Pete Carroll has come out and said that he he thinks that Rashad Penny has deserved more touches in this offense. Cool. But honestly, on the inside, I kind of feel this is a little bit of a trap game. You got the Rams gaining some momentum coming off a win against the Arizona Cardinals. I'm going to start Rashad Penny, but he's going to be lower in my rankings. I haven't seen this consistently enough. We've seen this story before from Rashad Penny, and then been absolutely burned when he goes out there and gets injured in the first quarter and and absolutely kills our fantasy week, right? We've seen this story play out multiple times in this exact same backfield. I want to buy the hype. I loved Rashad Penny coming out of the draft. I love the talent of Rashad Penny, but the consistency just has not been there. And honestly, I'm a little bit worried about this matchup for him. Like I said, I'm going to list him as a start, but he's going to be lower down my rankings. So make sure you check those out later in the week for the Rams. Do we get back Daryl Henderson this week? I mean, I think we should have him back, but this is another one of those backfields. Just plug and play, right? If we have Daryl Henderson active and 100%, he's the guy you're starting. If we don't, we go to Sony Michelle, especially in a matchup going up against Seattle. They allow over 23 fantasy points per game, fourth most in the NFL. Don't 
overthink this one. If Daryl Henderson is active and 100% healthy, he's the guy. Because when he faced off against this same Seattle defense back in week five, 17 carries, 82 yards, and a touchdown. And that's the guy we're going to bank on here if he's fully healthy and good to go in week 15. Back out east for the Baltimore Ravens, Green Bay Packers, and love to see a healthy Aaron Jones back in the mix, don't we? Just last week, five carries for 35 yards and a touchdown, three catches for 30 yards and another touchdown against the Chicago Bears. Love that for our fantasy lineups, right? But we also saw A.J. Dillon go out and get 15 carries, but honestly, we can come to expect that every single week. He was doing that before the Aaron Jones injury. He's probably going to be doing it here the remainder of the season, especially with Aaron Rodgers banged up himself and his toe injury they're going to have to rely a little bit more on the running backs difficult matchup for these guys though going up against the Ravens but honestly I have to stick with the upside here of Aaron Jones the touchdown upside is there for Aaron Jones he's getting work in the passing game and on the ground any scoring opportunities going the way of Aaron Jones I like AJ Dillon I like the touches but the touchdown upside just isn't there they're committed to Aaron Jones around the goal line and that's going to be the guy that I start here once again against the Ravens for Baltimore Devontae Freeman still the clear running back one in this offense. How do we know that? Well, last week, Latavius Murray had one touch in which he turned into one yard. It just happened to be a one yard touchdown. Damn. That sucks. Would have loved to have that go the way of Devontae Freeman, but it is what it is. Freeman went out there, had 18 touches. He's had five targets a game, three out of the last four games he's played. And we know Lamar Jackson is banged up. How available is Lamar this week? Because if he's not, we could see a whole lot of Devontae Freeman here once again, going up against the Green Bay Packers. Not the easiest of matchups, though, allowing only right around 16 fantasy points per game. But if I get 16 points out of Devontae Freeman, I'm a happy man here in week 15. Back down to Florida we go for the Bucks and the Saints, and this one's going to be my Manscaped matchup of the week. That's right. As soon as this video is over, head over to Manscaped.com and get yourself something for Christmas. Quit procrastinating. Christmas is only like 10 days away. Go get yourself something for Christmas, fellas, and use the promo code HEADLINERS at checkout. I'll give you 20% off and free shipping. Do not miss out on that here during the holiday season. But back to this matchup. You have Alvin Kamara coming to the rescue right here as soon as the fantasy playoff starts, and it's a great time for him to be back in 100%, especially at a time in which Tampa Bay has allowed 100-plus rushing yards to opponents in three straight games. Love that. Alvin Kamara just last week had 31 touches. We know he's healthy. Plus, with all that volume, we can tell that he's not being overly affected by Taysom Hill under center. There's no way you sit Alvin Kamara. He's kind of going to leave the scraps for Mark Ingram as long as he returns here this week off the COVID IR. Kamara is the guy in this backfield. For Tampa Bay, the Hot Streak Lenny continues. Right, We need a song that comes out called Hot Streak Lenny. Somebody needs to put that together. Now, New Orleans is no pushover, right? I mean, they're number one in the NFL against opposing running backs, allowing only 14 fantasy points per game. And honestly, if I'm being totally transparent, Hot Streak Lenny struggled against this defense back in week eight. But New Orleans has only allowed 100-plus rushing yards to opponents four times all year. Three of those times have come in the last four weeks. So this is the window of opportunity for playoff Lenny, regular season Lenny, hot streak Lenny, whatever you want to call him, to have a decent week here. Now, the ceiling may be a little bit lower than what we've seen here in recent weeks, but you can't sit this guy in the way he's produced here in this offense with the amount of scoring opportunities that he gets every single week. Now we head out to Monday Night Football, Vikings and Bears, and hey, Dalvin, I see you out there. Shoulder just magically healed. Dude, like the bionic man or something. I mean, it happened quickly. Dude gave zero Fs last week, came out and ran like a man on a mission who was 100% healthy. And now we get to Chicago Bears who allow over 18 fantasy points per game and were just run on fantasy-wise by Aaron Jones just last week. We know when Cook is healthy. We don't see a whole lot of Alexander Madison, so we're firing up Dalvin Cook here once again for Chicago. Kind of saw... A down week for David Montgomery. Still had 10 fantasy points there and half PPR scoring. But with Justin Fields under center, he's kind of going to limit David Montgomery from time to time and take some of that rushing upside away. But the passing work, that's what's really going to help David Montgomery remain safe on a weekly basis. He's had seven plus targets now in back-to-back games, and we love to absolutely see that. Plus, we know dude is not 100% healthy. Going up against Minnesota, though, they all run around 19 fantasy points per game, ninth most in the NFL. Primetime Monty, though, 
he could thrive this week and going to remain a start. All right, those are my starts and sits for the running back position here. Week 15, fantasy football, heading into the fantasy playoffs. Looking forward to it. Hopefully, we've been able to help you guys here throughout the season, and hopefully, you're finding a lot of success in your leagues. If you are, leave a comment down below and let us know. We'd love to share in that success here with you in this community. So, uh, hopefully, you guys are having a great day here today. I'm going to go out there and check to make sure I don't have holes all over my roof right now, but hopefully, you guys have a great rest of your day, and we'll talk to you later. I'm a headliner.